What's up, YouTube friends and family? Loves, love its Whovians, all you great people out there in YouTube world. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, the Bad Wolf. Now, I'm recording this about a half hour before I'm getting ready to do a live. And um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to jump on here and touch base on a couple of things. So, uh, first of all, hit that bell like subscribe. We are doing pretty great with the numbers. We finally hit 46,000. We are 4,000 people away from 50. You know, that is the goal. All right. Don't worry. I'm still going to do videos and all that, but uh, we're definitely going to um, switch into another phase. Don't freak out. Still going to be doing all the wonderful stuff that we do here. Um, but I'm going to be spending more time in the books. And from now on out, each book that I cover, like one will be the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, um, which will entail how to sue these municipalities and whatever else in federal district court. So we're going to learn all of that. We're going to talk about um, some more tax things. We're going to have a specific playlist just for each one of these things. So from here on out, now that we've got the whole jumble out, uh, it's going to be each one of these different sections we're going to focus in on and have a playlist. So a number of those videos will probably just have uh, coming up. We'll have just all the same element in there. We got more files to go through. We got more processes, more books. All right. So keep in mind that all the information never truly ends. It never, it never does. Cause when they figure out, we know now how to do something, they try to maneuver it and uh, you know, make it a little bit more jazzy. So we will continue to bring you those updates as we see fit. Till then, we've got so much more to cover because now for me, I am out of all of the normal materials that I know like that. So now your boy has to go back to school. I feel like I'm 19 again when I first kind of started actually putting this stuff into application. So yeah, I can't wait to dive into half these books. I got the banker's book. Okay, so actually their internal book. I've got some police manuals, their manuals on, I mean, literally their own books. All right. So we're going to delve deeper into that. So remember, if you guys want to see the videos, make sure you go to the YouTube, main YouTube channel for James C. Lovett or at the bad wolf on youtube either or will get you right here or there or somewhere over yonder wait not far off and click the full video list it'll say 800 plus videos i think we're almost up to 900 videos in there all right and no you don't have to watch all of them but i highly suggest you watch as many as possible if you want to learn all the stuff that i've learned in the last 20 plus years okay doing this and doing that um another thing for some of you guys who either email me or a very select few who uh, text me, keep in mind, I am not sitting here like Batman. Waiting for you to email or text me and I have to jump to your beckoning call. OK, very few people have that luxury with me. Anything I decide to answer is because I'm choosing to because I want to. And. Nine times out of 10, you didn't send in a donation and you just want some information. I cannot step you through every aspect of your life. I will not do that. I don't even know all of it. I still have so much to learn. And even them, they don't know all of it. Okay. So I will get to it. And if I don't get to it, meh. All right. That's how it works. If you want to learn it, you learn it. Don't want me to learn it and then give it to you. If it's not something I already know, and even if it is something I know, keep in mind, I don't want to be contacted late at night. And if you email me for a consultation after four or five o'clock p.m., it will not be seen until the next morning, right around nine o'clock. And then you're in line with 200 other people who emailed me trying to get the same time slot. And it doesn't work that way. I also want to thank the trolls out there. Oh, yeah, because you know what? Uh, the very few things that I have entertained, what happened? We proved the code or the whatever else right. 
and most of them have left me alone. So EA, thank you for the trolls, watching the videos, and researching the information. Okay, and as always, all the government agencies and whoever else who watch my channels, thank you guys for watching and making your changes internally and whatever else and helping to keep uh, America, America. And the other ones, well, you're always going to have some people who, uh, well, there's always going to be at least one rotten apple in the barrel. That's just how it goes. So, um, and remember, how many good agents do you have if you've got three bad agents and the good agents don't report them or stand up for our constitutional rights? in America. Just saying. All right. So without further ado, let's get into the information. So this particular video is not going to be like horrendously long. Um, but this video is in response to two particular files that people wanted me, kept asking me to create or provide. Okay. Which then created so I can provide it, I guess. All right, so if you haven't been to blacksite32.com in a while, you definitely want to go and check out. There have been new files added there, all right? So, and those are in the free documents section, all right? And there's a lot more. So I've heard these people out here, eh, the Ben Wolf's prices are expensive. Well, let me think about it. If I sit and create it and take time away from my friends, family, and my, my child, to provide you with a file or service, kind of want to get paid for it. You guys don't have any problems paying $20 for a frappa latte mocha chake or whatever, or going to see Jay-Z or Will Smith or whatever, paying, you know, 100 and some or whatever it is, all right? And I'm trying to help you be free and change your life and get you back into the private sector. Oh, yeah, that's what we're referring to this as now is the private sector, because that's what they call it. Right from the Department of State. Hello, what do you call it if I'm not in your jurisdiction? Ah, you mean the private sector? Thanks. Click. <laughs> Hello? Hello? So, private sector. And when you're not operating with their stuff, you are a non-resident. All right? So, yeah, I kind of got to get paid. Let's just, You know, you guys want me to address it? Yeah. You're not sending any... Uh, donations in for these questions. I'm, I'm a long way since, you know, years back when we first started this. Doing 200 emails uh, a day is getting old. And if you still want me to, you know, answer, which at some point I might just stop answering all questions. If it's not a consultation, I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to. Don't have to. Don't have to. Answer. Mm -hmm especially the ones that are rude and don't even ask, like, how's your day? How are you feeling? You know, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate your work. I get, so on this page right here, the department unit. Okay. All right. Just had to throw it out there, keeping it real. All right. So I digress. Let's get back to what we're really here for, although that stuff is important too. So one of the letters that people wanted is a request letter for, which I don't know why you really need it, but there's a part two to this. Um, contacting your property tax assessor and requesting the property tax form, okay? So I have a letter for that. However, you don't necessarily need me need my letter. So don't get it misconstrued. You don't need me to do it. You can just go to your property tax assessor or even call them. However, that letter is combined with the property tax dispute, all right? So let's say you've got property taxes and you want to dispute them. You want to dispute that your land is private. It's non-commercial. I have a letter for that, all right? We first start off talking about, and I can see the letter, obviously. You guys can, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, we're talking about the Bill of Rights. We're talking about jurisdiction over the property, Okay. I'm going to tell you in here, this is what you need to do to ensure that your property is really looked at as private, okay? Because most likely it's not. It's considered citus, all right? Meaning property of the city because you've registered it. So that's why you want the property tax exemption form. So this letter is designed to inform you of your right as to why you can say what you're saying. And then you need to place your property into a private domain, trust, etc. 
in order to be there. So what backs up your information? So the letter is written, okay, not specifically for, it's it's a generalized letter with information. So you're going to need to go through it. You're going to need to read it. You're going to need to make take out things that don't apply to you. You're going to input things. You can move it around and change the grammar. It's a, it's a shell, but it has all the pertinent things in there. So you're looking at about 30, 40 some odd different things where you're basically challenging them that, hey, in Black Law's dictionary, it says this. And if it, this over here says this. So this is not the get out of necessarily paying taxes. This is a, a part of it where you are able to say, well, due to these reasons, okay, I'm going to transfer my property into a trust, which we've already talked about. These are the things that define this. And if you want me to pay said things, then provide me with this information. Okay. So that is the one. This letter will be combined with a secondary letter. That secondary one, which people have also been asking me about, is a is going after the cancellation of the mortgage due to fraud. Okay. Now, as we talked about before, we do have a person who can create a letter specifically for your individual scenario, whether it's a what foreclosure or um, just the fraud with the promissory note. Um, on average, that's going to run you around a thousand dollars ish. And if you want the discount, you can tell them that the bad wolf sent you there. Okay, and where you would go would be. Um, his name is Sean Adley and he works with mortgage audit solution. Okay. Dot com mortgage audit solutions.com. All right. Go there and look them up. You can tell them the bad wolf sent you and you'll get a little discount there on that particular ser all services that you get. Now, keep in mind, he does not, um, take, you know, uh, walk you through the court process if it has to go there. Some have um, used the paperwork that he provides and have gotten their stuff shut down and their house was then given to them, you know, paid in full at that point in time. Now, that is that is one of many things that can occur. They can try to ignore. They can rebuttal. They can give you part of the information. He just provides the form with all the fraud that he can possibly find in there and about 88 to 92 percent of almost all mortgages out there have some type of fraud okay but do not expect him to go further than that he provides the paperwork from there you'll either have to work with them or sue them in federal district court just to keep it real all right so my letter is a an alternative version to that where you're using respa okay and that is the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. And you're using other laws associated with that to send to them your, your institution your, and your servicer and whatever you got going on. Each individual thing might be different. Individual results will vary. Okay. Um, but in here, we are using the proper codes to request information. Okay. Okay. So that is your QWR. You have the right underneath that. And RESPA, okay, under these different sections, we have detailed here to ask them questions. And they must provide these things. They cannot deny or ignore anything unless it, the question doesn't make any sense. So let's see here. We've got um, 25 different things that you are going to be able to request from them. We're informing them that they need to provide an answer to each one, otherwise it's considered fraud. We're letting them know that though we're trying to do this through the administrative process, that if you do not provide everything that we're requesting, and if you do provide everything that we are requesting, it's not to our satisfaction and understanding, we will get the IRS involved. We will get the comptroller involved. We will get the uh, SEC involved. We will uh, contact the uh, FBI and the Department of Justice and get all of them involved because you are scamming me. All right. So 
or have scammed me. That is what's in the secondary letter. Now, these two letters can be found on blacksite32.com on the um, file section, uh, the file shop, okay? So it's not going to be in the free shop. This is in the paid one. People have been asking, asking, asking. So now I sit down and created a really good rough draft. Like I said, individual results may vary. But if you want that information, then that is where you can get it and breeze through it. So um, I've combined those two together. And uh, instead of charging, you know, uh, 200 bucks for each one, I think it's less than 200 for, I think it's like 100 and something for each, for both of them together. All right. Uh, that is about it for that particular information. So what else do we have going on? So we now know that we should be addressing the jurisdiction as the private sector. All right. Now, I've heard people who said, oh, I talked to so-and-so and they and this this agent told me you cannot separate the person, you know, from the straw man. That's true. Why? Because the person is the straw man. The straw man is the person. But you, the living entity, by alter ego, if you believe that is you, it is not you. Because the use of the all caps is a vessel, a trust, a public transmitting utility. It represents you. You represent it. But those aren't the same thing. I can represent Microsoft or whatever. That doesn't mean I'm Microsoft. I'm Microsoft. <laughs> you cannot separate me. No, two separate things. Because remember, at one point in time, you had to submit your information to be recognized them, recognized by them as one of them. Okay, okay. Um, another thing I heard recently is some people have been submitting the uh, Form Fifty Six F. Okay, let's break this down a little bit here. Form 56F is for an entity, a true entity, where it has a separate name than the name you are using. If you are doing the Form 56, that's up to you. This is not legal advice or anything like that. You'll never find any of that here. You want to use just Form 56 for labeling somebody or uh, as a fiduciary, okay, to cover your bills and what's nots. All right, so I think I got everything covered on this one. All right, I like it when I get to put my sheet, my notes away to the side. All right, so in about 30 or 40 minutes, I'm going to be going live, so get ready for that. Uh, what else do we have? What other side things that we... Uh, come up with okay so we now know that in order to do right to travel for all the people out there who are trying to do it the proper way ensure that you create a private trust transfer the vehicle into the private trust then record the transfer with the dmv that the trust now owns the vehicle all right now, what else we have? Um, uh, we have what was it going to do? Let's see what else we have to hear. Or not. Um, as always, if you see anybody using any of my materials out there or my likeness, logos or whatever else being displayed, you know, things that are protected by me and are protected through copyright and whatever else, ensure you use the button over there or over there or over yonder to report them, especially using the sovereign word, uh, because that is defamation of character. So report them that video in their channel. Thank you in advance. Otherwise, Talked about all the new files on Black Site 32 on the free docs page. We've made a lot of additions. And when we start having seminars, so what we're going to start doing is for the first 100 people, okay, you will be able to click a tab on Black Site 32 on the seminars page. 
and sign up. It will only be for the first 100 and each month or each for each seminar, rather. How about that? Each seminar, we're only going to take about 100 people in there. And uh, we will have people in there. It'll be me talking about either health or health and then court stuff. Um, it'll be talking about, um, you know, the maybe an hour or two where we just answer straight questions for just that private group. Uh, I might have somebody in there talking about trust, but whatever it is, on whichever days we're going to do it, we will have them detailed out. So you'll be able to apply, um, um, sign up for each one of those things. So it takes a little work putting all this together and then getting the people to participate and all that stuff and figuring out, you know, all the logistics. But we will have that coming up soon. Uh, otherwise, uh, everything else is going pretty well. We've been reaching a ton of successes because that's what we're supposed to have. Now, remember, guys, when you're out there, be courteous to your fellow nationals who are operating in a foreign international com commercial public trustee jurisdiction for they know not what they do. They don't understand the private sector. You're going to start hearing more people using that term because that's what it is, the private sector. There's the public sector, public side, private sector. All right. They are not trained in it. They are trained in everything public. And one of the biggest takeaways, guys, is you're going to have to, and you're going to start seeing this. I'm just waiting for one last piece to come in before we make the big shebang bang on it, is that you're going to have to separate your private side from your public side. We've been combining them. They don't mind when we combine them and it works in their favor. But now that we're starting to understand what's going on, they don't like it that we're trying to separate from them. Yeah, the hoes don't want to be pimped no more. Unless we choose to be pimped. <laughs> Call me silk shirt dog. Silky. Yeah, we don't want to be pimped unless we want to do business. And we have that. The Constitution protects us operating in the private. We just have to know how to get over. So the biggest takeaway from this is that you need to learn how to have your private side and have a given name, a private name, whatever else, because they're never going to give up that registered all caps name. Now, whether that means you use it with your, you do this with a, a, a passport or you create a new name with the government through the IRS and you create it as a tax exempt entity and you operate everything through that. Whatever it is, or you create your own private IDs. Now, the only difference is they don't like the private IDs because then you're operating as a non-resident. So it doesn't mean that they're fake. A fake ID or a fake plate for those people of law enforcement who are watching means that you or that person has copied so closely that which is already in existence. So if I make a plate and it looks just like the Florida State plate logos and Florida State on there, then yes, that would be a counterfeit plate. If I do the same thing with an ID and I try to make it look like a driver's license that the state issues, or even a passport, it's so close, it looks like it, but it's not. That is a fake or counterfeit. The Constitution for the United States of America, the supreme law of the land, allows us to operate in the private. There's a difference between the state of Wisconsin and Wisconsin state. There's a republic side where the people own it in the land that is a nation. That's where we were born privately. And then we were asked what? To prove residency. Well, I thought just by living here, I was a resident. No, I'd be wrong because the government and the state of has established that. You can be in the area and not belong to the Boy Scouts. What, because I'm in the area, I can say I'm a police officer? No, you have to prove that you're one, apply to be one. It's the same thing to be a resident of that state. So until you are a resident of that state or that membership, that PMA, Private Members Association, you are a non-resident. You're a non-resident alien if you literally come from another whole country. But if you're here, using your terms, we are then considered non-residents. Which is why a lot of people who want to do the revocation of election... We don't send in the forms any, any way, anymore. 
We don't send in our whole letter of, re of revocation. It doesn't mean anything. They don't want it. I talked to them. They were kind of rude about it, but they said, we don't, we don't want that. They said, if you know how to file and you know how to apply to open up an entity, that's what you do. Okay? So stop sending them your revocations. What you need to do is apply with your W-8BEN or your W-4V or your uh, 1040 NR. NR stands for non-resident. Did you know that each state has a NR file? So if you're operating as a non-resident, but here's the thing, don't use your government state-owned name. Use your given name. Now, if you want to use your state name and figure out how that works with them, I'm just saying if they if you're if you're using your James C. Lovett and then you're trying to tell them you're non-resident, well then you better attach a letter stating that I formally renounce my residency to the state of California when turning in these things. But I told you that's what I have in my binder, notarized with my signature, or you can get it notarized with um, the state, your um, secretary or your, your notary. Okay? Otherwise, everything you're doing is you're showing them that you are the smartest slave that they have on their ship. Because you have not left the ship. You have not left their maritime waters. You are still still a juridical person. If you're sitting there telling them, and don't get me wrong, I'm not yelling. It ain't nothing. Because from the first time I started this to where I'm at now, I've learned this. All right? Now, we know that our name in all lowercase is supposed to be considered private. But when they don't know the differences in the jurisdiction because of the all caps capitalizations, which is in Black Law's dictionary all the way back from when it created. But see, the low-level functionaries who you deal with on a normal basis, they don't read that. They're not taught that. That sounds like trash to them. Gobbledygook, Latin, ancient Greek. I speak most of those, but only parts of some of them. But the whole thing is, is that you have to then operate and do things under their terms. So give the baby their bottle change your name doesn't mean you still can't operate as a juridical person with the all caps name but have another name with your face and id okay now i recommend doing it through something where you can get the government or them to issue it but if you do it privately that's also good but once again if you're going to do it privately don't use your juridical name in all caps on your own ids Put on there that you're a non-resident of this particular state and all the states of that are affiliated with the corporation known as the United States. And that I'm either under my micronation's jurisdiction, I'm operate as a state citizen, operate as a national of the United States, operate in the private sector. I'm an internationally protected person, IPP. Uh, what is that? 18 USC 112. On Cornell Law, you can look it up. Operate as a private person, also on Cornell Law. Whatever it is, know what you're doing and make sure that you've distanced yourself from the juridical person. All right, guys, that's it. I got to get some food in my stomach and get ready. And if you're lucky, I may even change my shirt and do the next live coming up in about 30 or 40 minutes. Check you guys later. Wolf's out. Don't forget to hit that bell like subscribe. Take care of yourselves. See you soon.